So this is where we finished up on the last video and by now you're going to be desperate for more detail. So let's start off by looking at the heart in a little more detail. And I'm using one of the diagrams from my physiology notes book again. Now remember that this is the left side of the heart because you're always looking at someone else's. And this is the right side of the heart here. Just write that on to remind yourselves. Now, what we did last time is we started off in the right ventricle there with relatively deoxygenated blood. It's at the, actually, the oxygen saturations in that are probably going to be about 70%, actually 75%. It's not fully deoxygenated, it's partly deoxygenated in health, but it still needs to go to the lungs to get more oxygen. So the right ventricle is going to contract. That's going to go up through that valve there called the pulmonary valve. And the blood's going to go up into the pulmonary artery. Now, why does the pulmonary artery divide into two so quickly? Well, obviously one branch goes to each lung because you've got two lungs. So that's going to go to the left lung. That's going to go to the right lung. And the blood's going to circulate through the lungs, collecting the oxygen, giving up the carbon dioxide. And then it's going to come back from the lungs via these pulmonary veins. There's four pulmonary veins in you. And they're draining the blood back into the left atrium. From the left atrium, it's going through to the left ventricle. The left ventricle is going to contract and that's going to send the blood out of the aorta through that valve there, the aortic valve, into the systemic circulation to the whole body. The somatic circulation. Soma is just a Greek word that means body. But that's taking blood to all the systems of the body. So if we just remind ourselves on the previous diagram, what we had was that, that was the pulmonary artery there, taking blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. And that's the aorta just there, taking blood from the left ventricle to the body. And that was the pulmonary veins there taking blood from the lungs back to the left side of the heart. So that's just a bit more detail on that. Now round about here, all, all this here, the muscular wall of the heart, do you know what that's called from, from other places? That whole muscle, big muscle in the wall of the heart. You might have come across that, that's called the myocardium. And the myocardium itself, of course, needs a blood supply. And what happens is that blood supply comes via two main arteries called the coronary arteries. So these are the coronary arteries here. Coronary means they look like a crown, an upside down crown of arteries. And this vessel here is the aorta. So the very first two vessels that leave the aorta are the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. So there's going to be other vessels from here go up to the head and the arms and all sorts of things. But the very first two blood vessels, the arterial vessels that leave the aorta are the coronary arteries. And it's these coronary arteries. They actually go over the surface of the heart. They're not quite as thick as I've drawn them here in, in real life. I've drawn them a bit thicker so you can see them. But that's the left coronary artery. There's a main branch going down there called the left anterior descending branch. And one kind of goes around the back. That's called the circumflex taking blood to the... This is taking blood to the left side of the heart. That kind of goes around the back. And this, this right coronary artery here, it's taking blood to the right side of the heart and right down to the, to the bottom, to the inferior parts of the heart as well. But branching out, taking blood to all parts of the myocardium. So the myocardium is not really getting its blood supply from the blood that's going through the heart. It's rather getting its blood supply from these two arteries, which are the first two arteries to leave the aorta, here and here, these coronary arteries. And this position is actually really clever because what it means is when the heart is contracting, then the pressure in here is going to be high and that's going to 
perfuse. It's going to pump blood through the coronary arteries, taking blood to that myocardium to keep the heart beating. But then, of course, in between contractions, the heart has a little rest. This is called systole and diastole. Now, when the heart is not contracting, then the blood's going to tend to come back, it tends to go back. Now, the blood can't get back into the heart because this valve here is stopping it leaking back. That's the, uh, the aortic valve, the aortic half moon valve. Sometimes it's called the aortic semilunar valve. But when the blood's coming back and it can't get back into that because that valve shut it, but the blood's still coming back. So that means the pressure of the blood in this lower part of the aorta is going to be relatively high. And that's going to carry on pumping blood through these coronary arteries, whether the heart is contracting or not. So the blood supply through the coronary arteries is actually the best continuous blood supply in the body. Because of its position, it gets blood during contraction of the heart, and they also get a blood supply during the relaxation of the heart as well. These vital coronary arteries. And of course, what we don't want to get is a blockage in these coronary arteries, because if we do, that causes a heart attack. If there's a blockage of blood in there, that's called a coronary thrombosis. A thrombosis is a blood clot where we don't want one, and the coronary is the coronary arteries, and that will lead to a heart attack, what we call a myocardial a myocardial infarction, which we certainly don't want. So don't smoke, do get plenty of exercise, do eat lots of fruit and vegetables, don't eat trans fats. If you're diabetic, do manage your diabetes. If you're obese, do lose weight. Um, did I say smoking? If you smoke, certainly don't smoke. If you drink alcohol, certainly don't drink too much alcohol because we don't want to clog up these absolutely essential life-giving arteries taking blood to the myocardium. Now, we did mention another particularly interesting feature in the first video, and that was um, this strange arrangement here, the, uh, what was that called? The hepatic portal vein. That's right, it's hepatic because it's the liver. Hepatic because it's the liver. It's a vein because it's taking blood back to the heart, that little vein there. So an artery is any vessel carrying blood away from the heart, a vein is any, blood, is any vessel carrying blood back towards the heart, so it's certainly a vein. Um, but it's portal because it's a vein that ends in capillaries. So most veins, of course, drain into bigger veins, but that one ends in capillaries. Let's just look at that in more detail. And here we see that here. Again, diagram from the physiology notes book. So here we have the, uh, the gastrointestinal tract, which isn't green, but I'm gonna draw it green. So that's the gastrointestinal tract there, the gut all the way from the food pipe through to the very back part of the colon, through to the rectum, the gastrointestinal tract, the gut, the digestive system. Now, the blood that's draining the gut is collected in all these little capillaries, these small veins here, draining the gastrointestinal tract. And that blood all goes back to the hepatic portal vein. And that means the blood can go through the liver before it drains back into the larger systemic veins. So we can see here the blood's being sort of transported to various parts of the liver. And this blood is going to come into intimate contact, very intimate, close contact with the cells in the liver, the individual cells in the liver, which are going to break down the toxins, individual liver cells, called hepatocytes. Hepatocytes, the liver cells. Cytes means cells. Hepato or hepatic, to do with the liver. That's why that's the hepatic portal vein, to do with the liver. So in the gastrointestinal tract, there's all sorts of bacteria live there and they produce bacterial toxins. Now, if these went straight back into the blood, because they're toxins, they make you feel sick. So they need filtered out first. This liver, liver is this wonderful cleaning system, breaking down all the toxins. And also, foods need to be processed. So obviously, food is going to be absorbed. Proteins and sugars are going to be absorbed directly from the wall of the gut. 
the fats actually kind of go a different way around but the the proteins and the water soluble vitamins and the um, the carbohydrates are all going to go straight to the liver for processing so just to give one example there's different sorts of sugar can be absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract because there's different types of sugar in the diet but the only sort of sugar that leaves the liver to go back into the systemic venous circulation is glucose that's the physiological sugar that we need so all sorts of sugars might enter the hepatic portal vein there but only glucose is going to leave via the hepatic veins a vital role of the of the liver and then the other diagram we use quite a lot is this one and that kind of that is re really we could have started off with this one because it's a simplified version of um it's a simplified version of all of this one really that we've looked at so what happens here is the blood let's start in the left ventricle this time blood from the left ventricle through all the systemic arteries into the body all parts of the body that includes the brain the big toe the kidney the liver the gastrointestinal tract everything blood is deoxygenated collects carbon dioxide goes back via the systemic veins to the inferior and superior vena cava into the right atrium through to the right ventricle out to the lungs relatively deoxygenated blood arrives in the lungs gets oxygenated as it goes through the lungs and that goes back via the pulmonary veins to the left atrium to go to the right ventricle again so in essence it's just so simple uh, and yet such an anatomically complicated arrangement this constant circulation of the blood and it's interesting to note that all of the blood can circulate around all of the body in a one minute period constantly circulating transporting oxygen transporting nutrients distributing heat taking waste products away from the cells to the kidney and the liver to be metabolized and excreted and just maintaining this wonderful even state of homeostasis throughout the body